in a world more interconnected than ever before. We are unexpectedly affected by things that we cannot see and things we do not know. But there is a world beyond the public eye, a place that the media tells you to fear, a no-go zone. Follow Mike, a world traveler, bringing us to no-go zone stateside and abroad. A travel documentary series that breaks barriers. Mike goes to the places that others are afraid of, where no one else dares to go, to tell their story, the story the media forgets to tell you. See the other side of places like Baltimore, Southside Chicago, Opalaka, Syria, and more at MikeNoGoZones.com or Mike no Go Zones on YouTube. When someone brings up the topic of Iraq, what comes to mind? Instituting a severe, ruthless version of Islamic law appears to be embracing the five-star lifestyle. What if I told you that Iraq also consists of this? Forget everything that you've heard about Iraq in the past. I discovered a country that is looking forward and ready to turn the page on its tragic history. First question that everyone wants to know is how did I wind up in Iraq? Well, as previously noted in my previous video from Kabul, when you're in this line of business, you make contacts and friendships with other like-minded people. One of them is writer and world traveler Jorn Jorn Augustin. I highly suggest that you follow him on social media and pick up his book, Go and Discover. The links will be listed below. He informed me that he was going to be organizing a trip through Iraq. So of course, I jumped at the chance. The tour was to be operated by a local company called Bill Weekend, and their link will be listed below. By all means, use this company for all your Iraq travel needs. So after a long flight to Baghdad, I landed a day early to get a feel for the city. I decided to explore the Karata section, for that's where our hotel was located. I found it to be a charming neighborhood, and ironically full of churches, including one of the houses of worship that Pope Francis visited not too long ago. This church has a sad history to it. This is the Sayyidat al Najat which is also called Our Lady of Deliverance. This is a Catholic church that practices the Syriac Rite. It was the scene of a horrible terrorist attack in 2010. In October of 2010, the Islamic State attacked this church and killed 58 people. This sign honors the victims of that massacre. The church is still operational and welcomed Pope Francis when he visited Iraq. Due to two religions uh, coexisting. After that, I met up with my tour group, had dinner, and went to bed early for a long day tomorrow. The next day, we hit up the ruins of Tak Khazra, which included the Ark of Tessafon. 
These ruins once served as one of the capitals of the Persian Empire. The Ark is one of the oldest in the world, by the way. It was a climb to the top of the building in ruins that gave us a good vantage point of the Ark. We have Bjorn and Lewis. Yes. What's going on, bro? Well, we're here at Takata. Yeah. The largest single span brick arch in the world. And this is to be the seat of the Iranian Empire, Persian Empire. Amazing. So, Tak means uh, hairband, and then Kasra was the name of the king of uh, Persia at the time. King Hairband? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, my friend Bjorn, uh, we're gonna, you're gonna see more of him in the video, and because of him, I'm here. Yeah. I can't thank you enough. Very thank you. Good. Johnny. I'm yes. very happy being here. Cool. Thanks for inviting me to this. This is amazing. Too bad we couldn't go inside, but it's actually falling down. Yeah. So <laughs> you're risking getting bricks in the head. Yeah. It really is massive. Yes. Yeah. Project. How you doing? This is Rebecca. She's in our tour group. How you doing? How's it going? Yeah. And here we have Matthew. Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you enjoying our rack so far? Oh, very nice. Yeah. Keep your expectations low. Don't be disappointed. There you go. <laughs> the only problem is it's a little cold today. Oh <laughs> yeah, real cold. <laughs> very cold. We're being ironic, by the way. After building up an appetite, a local family hosted us for a lunch. And it just wasn't any lunch. This was a full on banquet. As hungry as we were, I feel like we barely made a dent in it. And I can't thank them enough for the hospitality and kindness. After that, we took a breather by the Tigris River and drove back to back. Okay, here we are on the banks of the Tigris River. First stop, Martyrs Monuments. Yes, because it's safe. This is Martyrs Monuments. We also by Sadun Street when we came across the statue of Aladdin and Princess Jasmine. Before arriving to Iraq, I was asked by many listeners of mine if alcoholic beverages were available. The answer is yes. To cap off the evening, we procured some alcoholic beverages from the many liquor stores in the area and called it a night. The next day, it was time to visit the ruins of Babylon. You've all read about this ancient city in history books, but to see it in front of you was definitely a special treat. While exploring Babylon, we ran into a cool German tourist named Benedict. Here we go, here's the map of the ancient city of Babylon. No need to say, it is boiling hot outside. It's uh, about 40 to 45 degrees centigrade, which is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and higher, so yeah, it's pretty hot outside. It's our tour group. It's a cool map. And this is where we are, Iraq. Need a mask. <laughs> and here we have Benedict from uh, Dusseldorf, Germany. Hey, what's How up? Doing? <laughs> Enjoying my time in Babylon. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful year. It's amazing. It's so, so gorgeous. It's a, you know, it's a shame too. Uh, the media, Western media, will never show this side. No, never, never. They, they only show the ugly. Problem. They only show like terrorist the worst, attacks. Right. But this country has so much to offer and so much Absolutely. historical sites. Like even like uh, when you compare it with Egypt and stuff, it's like they have the same to offer and the people exactly. are incredible here. Like it's true. It's it's amazing. I, I really enjoy it here. Yeah. It's an amazing country to explore. And now because the visa is easy accessible. Yeah, we got it. I got mine on arrival. So right, right. Yeah. It's uh, like before, uh, like uh, three or four months. It was not possible to get here. Right. Kind of, but only right Kurdistan. Now, yeah. Right, oh. Kurdistan. Only yeah. Kurdistan. But like the federal Iraq was not possible yeah. at all. But now we can enjoy this beauty of this beautiful part of the world. <laughs> exactly. And right next to the ruins of Babylon is one of Saddam Hussein's abandoned palaces. I gotta say, it felt surreal to walk through it. I thought that Babylon was going to be the highlight of my Iraq experience. Where we went to next totally blew my mind. Next stop is the holy city of Karbala. Karbala is an important city to the Shiite sect of Islam. But that's where the Imam Hussein shrine is located. Imam Hussein was an important figure in the development of the Shiite sect. I'll leave a link below if you want to do some further reading. And just look at this architecture here, it's amazing. And again, as I have stated in so many previous episodes, even though I am not Muslim, I was made to feel very welcome. The following day, we hit up Khan An Nukaila. It's a rest stop that was built during the Ottoman Empire. Again, I was amazed at the architecture and history.
Here's a clip of me climbing on the rooftop. After experiencing the beauty of the shrine of Karbala, I thought that I wouldn't see anything better than that. But then again, Iraq is full of surprises. We went to the holy city of Najaf. Najaf is another holy Shiite city, and Imam Ali is buried there. To call this shrine breathtaking would be an understatement. For the Shiite sect to be buried in the city is an honor, which is why the world's largest cemetery is located here. The Wadi as Salam has over 5 million people buried here, including many martyrs that fought against ISIS or Daesh. And if that wasn't enough, we also hit up the local museum. The curator of the museum even gives all complimentary books about the history of the city. So, where to next? The small town of Al Kifil. Now, what makes this town special is that it holds the tomb of the prophet Ezekiel from the Old Testament. When Iraq used to have a large Jewish population, this used to be a Jewish pilgrimage site. Again, I can't stress enough on how deep history runs through Iraq. Okay, walking to Ezekiel's tomb right now. And he's talking about it. Of course. Yeah, he's still among them. He likes to be with This is the former Jewish market. The Jews used to go to Belmont Yeah. They used to visit that place. They used to pray here also. Are these like local perfumes? Yeah. You wanna try that smell or something? Yeah, I don't wanna hold up the group yet, you know. Maybe on the way back. Okay. Make knife gift to bring home. After Al Kifil, we made a brief stop at Kufa. The mosque here is one of the oldest surviving ones in the world. It was completed in the year 670. After Kufa, our tour group knocked out several more places, including Al Diwaniya, where the largest Iraqi flag is, or should I say the largest Iraqi flag mural. Nippur, which was an ancient Sumerian ruin. It's where they worshiped the god Enlil, who was also known as the Lord of the Wind or the ruler of the cosmos. and the King Ghazi Summer Palace. Once upon a time, Iraq was a kingdom, but it didn't last long. This house was a summer residence for the royal family. Some people consider this era a golden age for Iraq, where it was a peaceful time. Here is one of our guides, Hussein, telling us the story of the royal family. King Ghazi. King Ghazi was, uh, he, he died in a car accident. Ah. <laughs> oh, he did die. He, he, he did. Technically. He died in a car accident. Yeah. Okay, let's just lead up. Ooh. Okay, and 
the most uh, famous one was the, the second Faisal, the, like the, the King the Faisal, the second. Um, when he became uh, adult, he ruled for a few years. However, the Iraqi monarchy uh, fell because there was a general who, who overthrew the king and and started the, the, the first uh, republic of Iraq. He became the first president of Iraq. His name was uh, Abu Qayyim Qasim. And uh, unfortunately, he killed all the, all the royal family. So the, the bloodline of the royal family uh, ended by, by the death of uh, the second uh, phase of Okay. So this is like just a few, a few. If that wasn't enough, the next day we hit up probably my favorite place to visit in Iraq. And that was the minaret of Samara. At one point in time, it was the largest mosque in the world. Want to hear how windy it was? Here's a sample. This is at the top of the tower. So, I should say. After that, we stopped by a massive ziggurat called Dur Kurigalzu. Again, it's like everywhere you step in Iraq is like stepping into a history book. After all of that, we all went back okay, to Baghdad, I'm showing this where I wanted to see a, a more modern side of Iraq. 
I want so I went to the Dream City Mall on my own everything in to do Iraq some shopping. Is these dusty old ruins and uh, there is modernization going on here. As you can see, a lot of developments. Uh, we all have to wear masks right now because it's still a pandemic, but there we are. On the way back to my hotel, I did stop by the old markets. It was Friday afternoon, so just about everything was closed for the day. Now, I want to talk about a serious topic, and it involves myself being American in Iraq. Remember the gracious family that hosted our tour group at that massive banquet? Well, I learned later on that our host lost his brother to American soldiers in the name of Friendly Fire. His name was Anwar Salman Savar. They never received any compensation or an apology. Despite all of this, they welcomed my tour group and I, his family, to find people of that kind of integrity and honor speaks volumes of their generosity. I know most people would not have had the strength to do that. What would you do in their situation? I don't know what else to say, but I'm going to dedicate this video in his memory. So, what did I think about Iraq? I had an amazing time, and I miss it already. I had a great time with my travel companions. But back to my final thoughts on Iraq. I see a country on demand. They've been through invasions and civil war. Unfortunately, sectarian issues still persist. But if the Iraqi people can show each other the same love that they show to visitors, I do have hope for them. I made good friends there. And hopefully, I will return one day. Inshallah. So where am I going next? I'm going to stay very close to home and explore the Liberty City District of Miami. Please like and subscribe.